Two households, both alike in dignity, in fair Verona, where we lay our seed. From ancient grudge breaks a new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. From forth the vague loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life. Whose misadventure, piteous overthrows, does with their death bury their parents' strife. So that's the introduction to the story. So, the story now moves to the house of the Capulets. Remember, they're the enemies of the Montagues. But young Romeo Montague still wants to go to the party because he wants to meet the beautiful Rosalind. So he's decided to sneak in with his two friends, Benvolio and Mercutio, and they're going to sneak into this party. But don't worry. Nobody's going to recognise them because they're going to be wearing masks. They're going to sneak into the party. And who else might be at that party we have here? Because Lord Capulet is going to be at the party. Because it's his house, we've got Lord Capulet. There we go. And he is obviously dancing with his beautiful wife, Lady Capulet. That's it. So you two stand together. Now, obviously, as this party is all about introducing their daughter, Juliet, to the man who he's going to marry, who she's going to marry, it's called Prince Paris. Who wants to be Prince Paris? Can be Prince Paris. He He doesn't live in Paris. His name is Paris. And he is there, and he's meeting Juliet. So, do you want to stand with the prince? Come and talk to the prince. There we are. Obviously, the Juliet's nurse is there because she's always there. But there's one other man who is the cousin to Juliet and he's very, very angry. And he's called Tibot. Come here and meet Tibot. Angry young firebrand. So, you just come and stand over here, Tibot. Now, at this party, we have uh, Mercutio. Come here, Mercutio. Mercutio, because he's cheeky and naughty, is going to be chatting to the nurse. And you two are chatting, and you two are chatting, and you two are chatting. And obviously as you're at a party, you're all drinking. So everyone has a drink, and everyone drinks a bit, like that. And everyone dances for a bit, and everyone drinks some more, and everyone chats for a bit, and they drink some more, and they dance a bit, and they drink some more, and the dancing gets even crazier. <gasps> While this party goes on, stand up, can you show Young Paris wanders off to talk to Tibot. Go on, talk to the guy right over there. And Juliet is alone on the dance floor, standing there, looking very beautiful and serene. When suddenly, young Romeo glances across and notices her. And he thinks, she's beautiful. She's beautiful. And he goes across to have a chat to her. And they chat. And they chat. And then they kiss. But we're not going to see the kiss now. <laughs> no, 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 no. And they have a little dance together. Very good. Until the nurse comes over and says, Your mother craves a word. So Juliet goes off to see her mother. She goes that way a bit. And then Romeo says to the nurse, Who is her mother? Who is her mother? Say, the lady of the house. And you go, oh, a Capulet! A Capulet! And wander off to speak to your friends. And Mercutio just yeah. over here as well. And then Juliet comes back from seeing her mother, and she says to her nurse, Who is that young man? Who's that young man? She says, Romeo. Romeo. A Montague. A Montague. Oh, no! Oh, no! For she realised she's fallen for her enemy. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. In the market, everything is quite peaceful until Tibbot comes in. And Tibbot says in a big, loud voice, where is your friend? Where is your friend? And they say, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. And he says, I want to fight him. I fight him. say, but he's not here. But he's not here. But he's not here. But then suddenly, Romeo comes to the marketplace. And Tybalt says, I'm going to fight you. I'm going to fight you. And Romeo says, 
but I love you. Meaning he loves him like a brother because he's just got married to Tibble's cousin. So he doesn't want to fight his new wife's cousin because he loves him like a brother. Even though they've been sworn enemies, he refuses to fight him. Do you think Tibble, who's very angry, very angry, do you angry his face? Ooh, that's an angry face. Do you think he's going to be happy being told by his enemy that he loves him? No, he's not happy at all. So what Tibble does is he draws his sword and he says, I will fight you. Romeo says, no. No. But Mercutio steps forward and Mercutio says, I'll fight you. I'll fight you. And then Romeo and Mercutio have a fight that's very careful and very safe, remembering health and safety at all times. They have a very, very dangerous fight. And at some point, it looks like uh, Tybalt is winning. And at some point, it looks like Mercutio is winning. And suddenly, Romeo sees that it's dangerous. And Romeo steps between them, a bit closer to Romeo, and says, stop. Oh, no, no, it's still on the sword. Stop. And in that moment, Tybalt reaches out and stabs <laughs> Mercutio. And Mercutio falls to the ground. Oh. <laughs> you realise you just stabbed someone. Now remember, the prince said death to anybody who fights in the city. Do you think you might want to run away? Yes, run away, run away. Out he goes. Now, oh, what's up? Mercutio is lying on the floor, saying, as he dies, a plague on both your houses. A plague on my <coughs> You have made worms beat of me. <coughs> exactly. And then, because we don't want any dead bodies on the floor, Mercutio gets up, and with the help of Benvolio, he stumbles off to die. Stumbles off. Romeo, how do you feel about your best friend being killed? Are you, are you angry? Yeah. Are you a bit angry or not angry? A little angry! He's furious! He's very, very angry. I'm furious! Just like that! <laughs> Come a bit closer. Stay with me with that sword. At one point, suddenly, Mercutio comes, no, Mercutio, Tibbot comes back. Mercutio is dead. Tibbot comes back. You've come to find out if the young man has died, if Mercutio has died. And when you find out he's dead, Romeo says, I will kill you. I will kill you. So, that's it, draw your sword. So Romeo and Tybalt finally have the fight that Tybalt wanted, remembering how they did all the time. And now, Tybalt is a very strong fighter. He has been trained with a French style. He's very, very strong. He's very, very angry. But Romeo, having just witnessed his best friend being killed, is even more angry and suddenly, uh, he stabs Tybalt, who stumbles off there and dies near the bench. Now, <laughs> Romeo, remember that it said, that the prince would kill anyone he fought fighting in the streets. Do you think it's safe to stay here? No, so he flees, followed by Benvolio.